Hey there, guys. This is Michael Everts and Jamie Rousseau with Flex Academy. Today, we have an episode focused on marketing strategies for your co-working space. With that, let's jump right into it. Jamie, why don't you take us away? Okay. I love this topic because I think this is really uh, a common sort of top of mind concern for operators before they launch. We've done some content on pre-selling, and then certainly after you launch, you're always thinking about customer acquisition. This is a customer acquisition business, which makes it fun and challenging at the same time. So my first tip for pre-launch and post-launch operators is have a marketing budget. Um, and Michael, I say this, you probably see this a little bit too, is folks, I think sometimes have this, if you build it, they will come mindset. Um, they think this is such a popular concept and people need it. And, um, you know, they're living I, in it all day, every day, yeah, you know, they, so they they're like, this, the everyone's Kool-Aid thinking of this and, place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it is true that there are really kind of a few key levers to pull and we're going to, Mike came up with some really awesome, uh, ideas, um, that he's going to share. So there are some creative things you can do in a few sort of key levers and you should have a marketing budget to start with. Uh, You can tweak that marketing budget as you go. But what I don't want you to do is launch this business, kind of have your working capital in the bank, have it not include marketing, and then realize I'm not getting enough, you know, top of funnel leads. I'm not getting enough attention. And I'm not getting enough new members to make this sustainable. So um, the rule of thumb for any small business is roughly 8% of revenue, which kind of helps calibrate around whether you're in a larger market with more competition and you have to spend more on marketing or a smaller market um, with a smaller space and your revenue is going to be a little smaller and therefore you're going to spend a little bit less on marketing. But start with the budget, plan for it, and then go from there. Yeah, no, no, no. Starting with the budget, planning first is always, always better than just diving into it and spending too much money. Um, You know, and on that topic, We're going to talk a little bit about testing and tracking because this is definitely a place where if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you can say, yeah, let's just put, you know, $400 in Instagram ads or let's put $800 in Instagram ads. And if you don't understand exactly how that's being targeted, how that's being used, um, it's not going to be an effective waste, you know, use of your money. It's also so important. And this seems like a lot of work, but you need to track all of your marketing leads. Uh, so uh, many co-working space uh, operators will ask people when they get in the tour, how did you find us? Where did you come from? Uh, you know, they'll have tracking links that they can set up on their website and their landing page to understand who's converting which way. But not only should you put, uh, you know, some of these different forms of marketing into place, you should be tracking how people are using them, how they're finding them uh, to really track the ones that that are more and more effective. Um, yeah. And so as we talk about testing and tracking, um, Jamie, do you want to tell us a little bit about some of the more traditional top of funnel marketing examples we see spaces use? Yeah, these are kind of the the big buckets. And Mike on the next slide is going to go into some creative ideas that you can pull from. But you will want to know kind of what works for you in your market and how to allocate budget. So Try to be thoughtful. I know this takes a while. I I run into this, you know, in my own tracking. You know, it can take a while to get the right systems in place. So you don't have to do it all overnight if you're just kind of getting started, but work towards it. Certainly, if you're doing paid advertising, you want to work with someone who is tracking and can really show you the ROI and knows where your leads are coming from. But to Mike's point, even simply, you know, documenting in a spreadsheet, how do people find you? And when someone joins, where did they come from? So did they come from, so our, our kind of main buckets are paid search, which would be Google. So you're looking for people yep. who are actively searching online. They know what co-working is, you know, they're looking online for that solution. Are you getting them from there? Um, are you doing paid social to build awareness? So Facebook ads that might be offering a free day pass. If you're spending money, make sure that you have unique links or some a unique landing page, some way to know where that lead came from and make sure that that lead is tagged appropriately in your CRM or your email system so that if they join, you know, you know, where did they, what was the source? What, what worked? What got them in here? And sometimes you're not going to know, but it's, you do your best and try to put systems into place to figure it out. 
Um, organic social might be the hardest one to track because you may not have kind of specific landing pages yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, and typically organic social is not going to be a, a major lead driver for you. It might be if you're in a smaller market, we'll kind of go through those rules of thumb um, in a couple of minutes. And then referral programs, Mike, I, you know, I've been at GWA conferences where people say, oh, we get most of our leads through member referrals. Yeah, for um, word of mouth. It, yeah. And, but, you know, you might sort of into it, you might sort of feel like that's the case. You really, you want to know because uh, you want to know what levers to pull. Should I spend more on paid search yeah. or should I spend more, you know, time and resources? On incentivizing out? members, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So where space, do you, so. where do you put the, the effort? And certainly you don't want to be paying for Facebook ads if most of your leads are coming from men member referrals. Um, or your like, you know, your best members are coming from referral programs. So, um, so definitely track as best as you can and just keep getting better at that over time. Yeah, no. And, and as Jamie mentioned, those are really four of the, the core ones that we see. Uh, what we try to do here is assemble a little list of different marketing strategies that we've seen before, um, both face to face and digital, because it is a two pronged approach. Um, you know, uh, we talked about it on previous podcasts. But when I opened my space was go promote it in, in coffee shops, even Starbucks have little pinup boards. You could go put like pinup little, um, you know, advertisements or whatever you need to. Uh, so highly recommend doing that ask in most places, most coffee shops are happy to get workers out of their coffee shops and into a real office and co-working space. Uh, so that could be a good opportunity. Um, there's opportunities if there's local trainings or there's lectures and you want to host it for free uh, and invite people in, that is a way that you can get people in your space to come see that lecture and then realize they could use your space for something else. Um, pop-up co-working is an idea that we've seen people do. We've seen WeWork do it. Um, we've, we actually recently saw a common desk. Uh, I know that they, whenever they're opening a new location, they'll go to like local food halls or whatnot and set up a little desk, you know, uh, at the, at the space. So people will just walk up and see, Oh, what is this desk? What is this? And you can tell them about your space. So pop-up co-working is a face-to-face -face idea. Um, Organizing live events kind of goes with the hosting training and lectures, but can be very, very powerful to get people in. Um, another great one is free co-working days. Uh, maybe once a, once a month, every first Friday of the month, you could have free co-working and, and have a way for people to get in, meet your staff, meet your community in person and you know use the space. Um, and then finally, we're just going to retouch on signage. If you could get any signage outside of your building, it makes a huge, huge impact. So work with your building owner or landlord to try to activate some signage, uh, flyers. Uh, you know, I've seen flyers and big poster boards hanging outside co-working spaces. Uh, and then, of course, you know, it, I've seen mailing and mailer cards before. Um, it can work. Not my favorite strategy, but um, some people do send mailers. Um, so that was a lot of face-to-face -face strategies. Some other strategies are digital marketing. We mentioned paid ads and social, but a very important thing to do when you work with your uh, marketing person is to optimize your website for local SEO. If you are based in Atlanta, you want Atlanta co-working, you want your space to be the very, very top Google search result. And that requires you to create content, blog posts, SEO articles. Um, and you need to make sure that you are, you're on top of that. Um, we talked about aggregators before in this series, but uh, the aggregators, the liquid space, desk pass, all of those, um, you want to be listed on them as many as you can manage. Um, and you want to have your space accurate, look good, uh, so that you can start collecting leads, free leads that come in there. Um, Facebook and Google ads, of course, we've talked about work with a professional here to understand how much you need to spend here and track, uh, what you get to make sure it's the right place to go. Blog content, uh, for uh, SEO information, uh, and getting ranked higher, um, organic, like Jamie mentioned. One great thing to do is to promote your members on social. So if you have a really amazing startup company within your space, uh, spending some time highlighting them, highlighting their success story helps people look back, think about you uh, and consider working in your space. And then finally, uh, we mentioned earlier, but referral programs, incentivizing your members to talk about the space, giving them discounts or credit for you know referring another member is another great strategy that can be done face-to-face -face, uh, and digitally. So I know that was a lot, uh, but hopefully those are some ideas that can uh, help get you jump-started uh, and you know, get, get off the ground running with some good, good marketing tactics. 
I love the variety there, Mike, because yeah. um, we this slide kind of talks about the rules of thumb. So there are yeah. sort of generalizations we can make, but it is really true that every co-working space and every market is unique. And so, you know, figuring out, you know, what works for you and even what you enjoy. I was just on a call and we were talking about yes. doing booths at local events. And the person who was asking, like, should I do this? was like, I kind of don't want to do it. <laughs> She's like, that's not yeah. how I want to spend my weekend. I didn't do it. Because people, yeah, people are going to so, feel that when they come to the booth. Right. And and so, you know, there might be an ROI to it, but you might just like really, you know, dislike doing it. Um, but yeah. another person on the call had said, oh, we do this every year at this certain event and we track, you know, the leads and the conversions and it performs really well for us. So even tracking like those offline face-to-face things that you're doing can be important. Um, and, you know, yeah. and even things like joining the chamber, like, you know, you yes, got to experiment. Yep. And then, you know, if it if it doesn't seem to be doing anything for you, you don't do it the next year, but really kind of figuring out, um, you know, what what works and getting ideas from other spaces. I think this is one of the, the areas where co-working space owners love to share marketing ideas. Yep. So the the typical levers that you're going to pull for marketing, you know, if you're in a small, everybody needs to focus on SEO. Mike, you said that right from the beginning. And one tip I would just make sure, you know, if you're already open and operating, your website may not be optimized for SEO. It's not a given that your website developer is going to do that because it's a separate competency, essentially. So you want to make sure you're keyword optimized and that you're um, to Mike's point, posting fresh content, you know, key, keyword optimized blog posts, that kind of thing. So you might need to, to put some budget against that. Um, and that's one of the things that's important around creating a budget. Make sure you can afford, you know, SEO services and things that just really will help you always show up when people are um, searching online. So in a smaller market, SEO and maybe awareness campaigns on Facebook um, slash Instagram, Google ads may not be as important in smaller markets if you're the only operator, for example, or there's only three of you and you all show up in the you know top three spots. More competitive markets, you know, major cities, you're still going to need to do the SEO and work even harder at it. And you may need to do paid search, which may be yep. tricky because it might get really expensive if there's it's a lot of competition. expensive quick in big cities. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so you want to work with, you know, an expert who can help you determine the ROI. And this is where the tracking comes in um, even more importantly, because you need to make sure that there's an ROI on that spend. Um, and then your Google business listing, you need, everybody should be keeping that up to date. That's a big organic traffic driver. You will probably find that 80% of your leads flow through that listing. I'm sure we've talked about this in our sales funnel video already, but we can't talk about it enough because even if you're already open, sometimes we get busy and we forget to kind of manage this. So if that's you, if that's your community manager, make sure that's on your uh, you know, your, your weekly Radar. tracker and yeah, yeah that's, that somebody's go, updating go that. Go add photos, go yep. respond to reviews, mm -hmm. go suggest members review, go get one of your friends, your personal friends that give you a review. Yep. But we can't stress that enough, how important it is to maintain that uh, because that really is, I mean, hey, every time I go to a restaurant, I open Google, you know, a new restaurant and see what is, right. what's its review on Google. People do the same for offices. And so got to make sure that that's high. Um, ideally yep. you want a 4.0 or above, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, depending on your market, it, it just depends, but, uh, yeah, try to keep that high. You want a high review for our community manager program. We started delivering templates that folks can oh, really? use to post twice a month. Yeah. Easy button, just swap out yeah. your colors, put your logo in and it's, you know, so, some relevant post to That's workspace smart. to help them keep it, keep it up to date. And then one thing I would say is definitely experiment with like the um you know the booth at the the coco hot cocoa crawl i think it was that we were just talking about but you want long term strategies in place that you know drive leads into your sales funnel you don't want to be trying something new to see if it, well you can experiment every month but you want that baseline of leads that you know is going to come through um from ads you know or from really great seo or from a referral program Awesome. 
Anything else you want to add here, Jamie, before I jump into the next one? Uh, I think the next ones are up next slide, but uh, anything else you want to add? I know. I, you know, I think marketing is just one of those things. It's great to go to conferences. It's great to interact with other operators and just always see sort of what's working, um, what folks are experimenting with. Like, Mike, I love your list. We've had folks experiment with like lawn signs, you know, you yeah. know, across the town. Try, pe- try new stuff creative. out as much as you can, uh, mm-hmm. because you might find something that's much better ROI. You're spending a lot less than, you know, Google ad or something and uh, yep. you're getting leads. So try a lot of stuff out. Um, exactly. so yeah, uh, you know, and, and speaking about marketing and budgets, uh, it's actually perfect timing because our next episode, uh, is focusing on, uh, managing your coworking finances. Uh, so we'll have that out as soon as we can. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on this episode of Flex Academy, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. All right. Let me stop that recording. Stop share. Stop recording. Cool. I thought that one was great.